This video demonstrates how to edit a simple redwork flower into a border design. Complete printed step-by-step -step instructions, along with nine redwork designs for the April birth month flower, the daisy, and the in-the-hoop zippered bag design are available as part of the Echidna Pie program. Two PDFs cover a lesson on editing and project instructions for constructing the bag. So you get the lessons, the project, and all the designs needed for this and one easy project. Since it's often easier to see a software process like this rather than follow along with step-by-step -step ones even when they're fully illustrated, I've made this extra video. I've already opened the design in Embrilliance Enthusiast. I also have Stitch Artist installed so you may notice some extra icons up here. Our first step is to isolate the leaf and the petals. So I want to get this leaf and these petals. There are several ways to do that and I'll show you one that can be done even if you only have essentials. So there are some things you can't do in, in essentials to finish this project, but most of it you can. First, let's take a look at the design on the objects bar by clicking the little triangle and you'll see that we have one object in here and it's the, the whole design and that's because most software that works with stitch files only sees objects by color and this is just one color. Now if I flip over to the software where I digitized it you'll see that there are actually 43 objects. So just because you only see one object in your software doesn't mean it was all digitized at one time. You could also work with the full size version of the design which is this one. This is a 200 by 200 hoop but I've already extracted this piece as part of the project so it's just easier to work with. So the way we can isolate those is with a stitch processor. So let's zoom in so we can see our flower a little bit better. And up here on the toolbar we have the stitch simulator. And what it allows you to do is to see a virtual sew out of the design on the screen. So if I just drag this across you can very quickly see how the design sews. And what we need to do is find the beginning of the leaf. So we'll back up here, almost to the very beginning, and I'm going to click the stop button. And what that does is it's going to allow me to insert a color stop or a color change. So I'm going to slide down here till I find a, a green. It doesn't have to be green, it just will look good for a leaf. And you'll see that we have this first little bit red and now the rest of our design is green. And you can see up here we have a little bit of red and a whole bunch of green. So now I need to move to the end of the leaf, which is right about there, and I'll insert a stop again. And this time I'm going to type in 1002, which is our red, and it can actually be any color. You can insert any color as long as it's different from the previous one. Now we need to find the beginning of the flower, and it's right about there. I think it's back a stitch. I think I got too many there, but that's okay. I'll show you something else here in a bit. Insert another color stop. This time we'll pick orange. And now we need to navigate to the end of the flower. I think you can see why now I picked this little design rather than the big one. And let's see, did I get to the end? We want to get at least to the end or maybe a little bit beyond it if you have enthusiast and we'll put in another stop. I'll type in 1002, go, and then we have our elements isolated. So if we go back over here to the objects pane, I now have five objects. I have a red one, a green one, a red one, an orange one, and another red one. So now we need to get rid of the red ones and I can do that by just clicking over here and now they're removed. Now this is still one object because it's grouped so we can ungroup it. I just did command U and now I have two different objects here and we have some extra garbage here that we need to get rid of and I'm going to zoom in again. And this time I need to use the stitch editor so I can just delete those stitches and delete them one at a time or if there's a whole bunch of them I could choose one of these tools. I think I just sort of have one or two here so let's just do it this way and maybe one down here. And there are 
our two elements. Now, we extracted these out of the middle of a design. That means there are no lock stitches at the beginning or the end. Now this particular design uh, does a run stitch out and then it does all these little leaves and it run stitches back and then it has a triple stitch or a bean stitch around here. So it's probably not going to unstitch. This one ends with a double run because it goes all the way around as a triple stitch and then it does this little back and forth thing right here. So I would definitely not want to leave that with no tie out. Fortunately, Enthusiast, which is the editor version of Embrilliant Software, lets us have an easy way to add tie stitches. So let's find that last stitch. And since I'm right there, I'll choose that one. I can use the forward and backward arrows to travel through the design. And you might be able to see the little thing moving there. And now I'm at the very end. It's stitch 547. And I'm going to left click and I'm going to pick ensure tie before. So that's going to put a tie off stitch before that very last stitch. And while we're still on the flower, let's find the beginning of it, which is somewhere over there. And I'm going to back up. And if you look up here, you can see that it now says electric green. And if I go forward, I'm now in the orange. So that's where I want to add my tie stitch. So I'm going to do ensure tie after, because that's the beginning stitch. I'm going to put a tie stitch right after that first stitch. So now that's, that little object is locked off. So now we need to do the leaf. Now I'm going to make a pair of these leaves. So it might be a good idea to wait till after I have my leaf pair made before I add the tie stitches. Otherwise I'll have some extra lumpy stuff right here in the middle because it, this leaf ties in and ties out right there. And if we have a tie in and a tie off on this leaf and another one right there, we're going to have a big glob of tiny short stitches and it's likely to have a thread break. So we want to avoid that. When I first did this design, I played around a lot with these elements before I came up with my final version. We're just going to skip right to the final version so you can see how I did that. So the first thing I did was to rotate this design. And I can tell you that ultimately I rotated it minus 31.25 degrees. And then I copied it, pasted it, and mirrored it. And we'll drag it over here. These two are ultimately going to uh, butt up to each other right there. But before we do that, let's add our tie stitches. So I need to go back to the beginning of this one. And oh look, I clicked on it right there, zero, stitch zero. So I'm going to uh, do ensure tie after. And then I'll go to the end of this one, which I don't know where, where would that would be. So I'm just going to use, oh, it's on this side. So I'm just going to use a forward key to get to that. And now I'm at the end, when it won't go forward anymore, and ensure tie before. And now I have my tie-off stitches. So let's move this leaf right up to there. And if you weren't sure that you got them straight, you can always do the align. And we'll just align top and close. And now I want to group them. Command G. I am working on a Mac, so use the appropriate keys if you're working on Windows. So there are my two pieces. Now to build my design, I'm actually going to put this on an in-the-hoop bag. And I need to know how big to make this. So I'm going to go over here. Let's copy that. Copy the leaves. I already have my bag file open, and there's my bag file. This is a 5 by 7 hoop, so you can see that right down there. This is the edge of the zipper tape, these two black lines. So this is the front of my bag, this is the little top, and this is the bottom part. This is the area where I'm going to turn it inside out. But this is the area I have to create my design in. So let me paste my leaf in there, and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. I don't want it quite up to the zipper tape, and I can always move it later. So I'm going to put one there. I'm going to copy, paste, and then 
mirror, whoops, I didn't want to mirror it that way, I want to mirror it this way. And put it right there. And then that's already on my clipboard, so I'll just paste again and I'll just drag this one down. And I'll select all of these and I'll group those. I'm just doing this really quickly, so you might want to take a little bit more time and get yours perfectly aligned. Let's put it about there. I'm going to go back to my other design, grab my flower, copy, go over here and paste. I'm going to put this down at the bottom. See, that's our last leaf section down there. So we're going to sew down and we're going to sew up. Actually, it doesn't really sew quite down because it's not going to sew in the sinuous manner. It's going to start here, sew a leaf, sew a leaf, jump and trim, maybe. Sew a leaf, sew a leaf, and down here, sew a leaf and sew a leaf. So let's um, rotate that one. And we'll just kind of eyeball it there. We'll paste again. Oops, I didn't do something right. Paste. There we go. And we'll rotate that one. And kind of put that right there. Paste again. And that's in the same orientation, so we'll just leave that. And, oh hey, that looks pretty good. So I think I'll leave it that way. And I want to select my, whoops, my flowers here and group those. You can select either on the objects pane or in the work area. It doesn't make any difference. And let's, um, actually let's select our leaves and our flowers and make that one big unit so that it's easy to move around. Now, if I sew this at this point, it is going to be sewing it at the wrong place for my bag. My at the end of the design, and we can see that it has five pieces up here, this last piece is sewing the front and the lining to the bag. And if you sew the design at this point, it's going to sew through your whole bag and you won't be able to turn it right side out and it'll be totally screwed up. Let's just be honest. So we need to move that to the right place. And I'll just tell you that the right place is after color number three in the bag. I'd also like to point out something else. You can see that we have our bag design here and we have six copies of our original design, although each one of them has something different in it. And if I select these, these two, and I choose move last, they're not going to move anywhere because they're already last in this object. It doesn't move it to down here, which is where we'd really want it. So what we have to do is we have to select these and drag them up to here. And now you can see that we have a new object down here and it's the last two steps in our bag. So our bag is all ready, but we should probably check it first. And we can use that stitch simulator. The stitch simulator is your friend. If you're working with designs you've never sewn before and you want to have an idea how they're going to sew, use the stitch simulator. Now we could just do this and watch the whole thing sew, or you could just kind of zip through it this way. And you can see, look, something happened here. Our flowers got out of sequence and now they're sewing before the leaves. Does it make a big difference? Not really. So you could leave them like this or you could resequence them so that they got in the right order. It doesn't make any difference. But now you have to test sew it. And the sewing instructions for all the steps for the bag are included with the Echidna Pie program. So you'll need to get that to figure out how to do all the rest of the steps. The Echidna Pie program is great. This is month 10 in our series for this year. And each one teaches you embroidery concepts and ideas. And then it gives you a project so that you can actually put them into practice. You don't have to make the project, but it's just a fun thing to do, and the projects are often pretty generic and give you good ideas to do with other designs. I mean, you could put any design in here. It doesn't have to be this one. Or you can make your design totally different. So I hope this has given you some great ideas for editing designs from your stash.
If you're like me, you have gobs and gobs of designs, and you have an idea for a project, and that one thing that you have in mind isn't in there. But if you look carefully, you can often find pieces that you can extract and combine together. This project was very simple, but the steps are the same. You isolate the areas you want, you make sure they're tie-off stitches if it's not a complete colored block, and then pull them out and recombine them and resequence them. And that's pretty much how you'll do a lot of these projects. So I hope you look into the Echidna Pie program. It's for the Platinum Club members at Echidna. You will need to get it from echidnaclub.com. I do not have the projects on my website. I do have the designs. So if you only want the designs, you can get them from me. And the links are below. So thank you for watching.